Let's make this grunge material from scratch. Come along with the journey with me. This is based off the making of video of this whole building, but we're just gonna specifically focus on this texture. We've got this. So obviously I'm gonna state that this was done in cycles. Okay, will it work on Eevee? I don't know. Eh, I mean, the ambient inclusion's not really coming through. Um, back to cycles. And cycles just looks crisper, just saying. So start off with a brand new material. The first thing I did is I separate the object so that we've got the top bit here is value one, for instance, and the bottom section is value zero. So the way I'm gonna do that is we're gonna go into, I know what's easiest, control T if you've got node wrangler enabled, and I want the texture coordinates and the mapping nodes. I'm going to use generated so we are focusing just on the top section um so we're just focusing on the one entire object for instance and now we want to grab just the top section so if we were to go ahead now and we added in a separate xyz i want to look at the z axis so you can see that we've got black on the top uh, on the bottom sorry i can now go into a color ramp dump that one in there and then if we wanted to, we could swap the colors around. And so now we're just kind of like focused on that section on top. Now, obviously we need to add more to this. So we want to kind of give it a bit of a um, bit of noise. So what do you think we'd add in now? Noise texture, noise. And from there we need to add them together. So we're going to go mix color and we'll dump that one in there. And then we'll throw the noise factor into there. So we can kind of see where the black section was on top. Now is kind of doing that. So now you can see where the black section is not really working. We have to change this from mix to add. And so now that blackness or the grunginess up top is staying on top. We're down the bottom. It's white. Awesome. I will, however, duplicate the color ramp and we'll throw it in here. And then if we start playing with the values here, I want more darkness on top. There we go, that's looking great. However, I do want it stretched out because at the moment it's just kind of like splotched on. So I'm actually gonna duplicate these two here. The vector is going into vector, but we're gonna change the scale. So I'm gonna go 0.25 and now we can see that it's streaking. Now obviously the corner there looks a little bit rough. I'm just gonna go bevel just so we can kind of see that kind of runoff. And that's what we're going for. Now, one of the things, if I were to duplicate this and put it side by side, we can see that the grunge is equal. It looks exactly the same. So we need to change that a little bit. And we're gonna be doing that in the noise texture because that's what we need to change. So I wanna keep this texture coordinate and I'm gonna select the object information, okay? Because we wanna use the random value. So with the random value, I'm going to go into an add, for instance, like that. And then from here, we're gonna go into a combine, X, Y, Z, there we go. And actually we might just move that into the Z axis. And if we were to put that into there, whoops, not scale, into location, now it's slightly moved. I mean, we could add them into all three. And that'll give us more variations. Maybe change this up to five. And to me, that's looking pretty good. If we want to, we could even go into maybe multiplier to really differentiate that. Differentiate that. Auto smooth, awesome. We're pretty much there. Sorry, future Marco here. 66% uh, of you aren't subscribed. If you've gotten to this point, just please consider subscribing. It's been nine years. I'm just trying to hit that 100,000 mark so I can have a sleep. <laughs> now, coming over into the color, we want to change the colors. So I'm going to add in a mix color, put that one into there. From everything that we've done, the results will go into the factor and then we'll plop the, the results into there. Obviously white on white. The top one, if we put it into like down here and make give it a bit of a dark brown color. Now we've got a bit of a dirt texture and then we can go ahead and add in whatever color we want. So like a dark blue. Not bad. If we really wanted to, could put some edge loops in. Control B, middle mouse, scroll that in. Control numpad minus, and then Alt S. And now you can see that we've got a bit of a slot there. 
It's not too bad. I like that. The thing is though, is the way that this is designed is based off the Z axis. So if I were to just on this model here, press V to rip, and we did a separate by selection, we can see now that the grunge layer has come around that slot. So that's why we use the object info. And we can see that the grunge here obviously doesn't go down as far because now it's only half the width, breadth, height of this one, each individual objects. So that's kind of like my thought process in how I did it. And with this building here, there's still more to come. With this building here, initially, I did have all this cut. I hate you. <laughs> all right, let's get back to this. And then that's where it was two separate objects. I mean, yeah, here, this is a perfect example where this is where the cut, so this is one object, this is another object, so that's where the grunge starts. Now to add a bit more to it, it's obviously very flat at the moment. What I ended up doing was getting a roughness map here. So if I were to um, go into that, actually, no, let's go search and we're going to add in an image, image texture, and this will be our roughness, metal roughness, please. Cool. And then we can throw that into the roughness there. Control T. And the way I did this one is I used the UV unwrap. So it's not procedural. So if we were to select all these, select all U, I'm just going to get cubic projection. Awesome. What we might do is just change the scale. So if I go 0.5, 0.5, 0 0.5, you can see how that grunginess is a little bit bigger. But to refine it a bit more, we can add in the color ramp and it doesn't need to be so harsh. So if I were to bring the black all the way up, you can see how it becomes super shiny. If I bring the white all the way down, we can see how uh, it becomes like a matte finish. So if we wanted to, we can just bring these two in a little bit. There we go. And then with that white, we could probably send it to a gray if we wanted to. Actually, I think that's pretty good as is. And then from here as well, we'll bring in normal map. So normal, normal map. There we go, normal, beautiful. And we will bring in another texture. So I'm just gonna grab this one here, Shift T. Let's put that into the color. This one down to here, and we'll change this one to normal. Doesn't need to be so strong, so maybe like a 0.1. Awesome, that looks great. However, one last little thing is the ambient occlusion. So if we go ambient occlusion into a mix color, we're gonna put that into B. Obviously the ambient occlusion goes into here, and we will throw in a uh, color ramp. So if I just go Shift D, this now controls where our color ramp is. Now, if in doubt when using color ramp, what I like to always do is make it bright pink. That way I know where the color ramp, um, the ambient inclusion is coming out. Obviously we can see where it is. So I'm just gonna change that to a bit of an orangey red color, bring it down to brown, and there we have it. That's how we can quickly make procedural grunge material, like and subscribe.